This morning I want to just encourage us with a few words from uh, the scriptures, different scriptures selected just to be able to uh, reassure us, reconfirm some of the promises of God to us for this coming year. Uh, it's been a good year, 2012, with all its difficulties as well as its uh, highs, but we enter into 2013. You should have been at the watch night service. It was really good. For those of you who were there, we really enjoyed God's presence. It was wonderful to enter 2013 with his blessings. But we're here and we've got some great plans, some great uh, purposes for this coming year. We're excited. We're a community that loves Jesus and wants to introduce 1% of Delhi to the Lord Jesus through our services and uh, through our programs. We guide people. We guide people into lasting relationship with Jesus, a lasting relationship with Jesus, and teach them to love Jesus and to love like Jesus. We're a community that wants to, that loves Jesus, wants to introduce 1% of Delhi to the Lord Jesus because we love him so much and we love Jesus and want to love like Jesus. We teach people to do that in our home groups. So as we enter 2013, what can I say to prepare you? What can I say to prepare you for this year, to encourage you? to be spiritually healthy this year, for 2013 to be your best year spiritually. If you ask the doctor how to be healthy, they'll say drink water. Lots and lots of water. Is thand mein You drink one glass and then... But water is it. Water is life. And you, you drink water, you must drink a lot of water that keeps health and balance. It keeps uh, everything in check, it seems to be. Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And this he said about the spirit whom he was going to give to everyone. It had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Jesus said, if you thirst, if you're thirsty, come drink. Again, in, verse, in chapter 4, a uh, few chapters before that, Jesus said to the woman at the well, he said, everyone who drinks this water that you're drawing from this well will come back for more. They're going to be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give will become inside of him a spring of water welling up, up to eternal life, unto eternal life. This Sunday, this first Sunday of 2013, I want to encourage you to drink, to drink water, to drink water well, to, to draw from the well. This morning's message is entitled, Making Jesus the Well of Our Lives. Making Jesus the Well of of our lives, to make Jesus the well of our lives and draw from him daily. I have some real news for you. I won't say bad, I won't say good, I'll say real. 2013 is going to be similar to 2012. It's going to have its highs, it's going to have its lows, it's going to have situations where you would need God more than ever before. It's going to have situations where you won't need God going to have situations where you won't need God. You can do just fine on your own. Dangerous situations. But all said and done, 2013 is going to be a year packed for each and every one of us. So we must learn to visit the well regularly. Daily, learn to be at the well. Learn to draw from the well. You're going to need him this year. And when you do, my prayer is that at the time that you need him the most. You will be in good standing with him. You will be in close proximity to him. And you will be in deep intimacy with him. My prayer for you, my dear brothers and sisters, is that when you need him, and you will, you will be in good standing with him. You will be in close proximity to him. And you will be in deep intimacy with him. I shudder to think of the moment when you most need him and you are not right with him. Or you are not close to him. Or you are not intimate with him. And you use and run to any other source of encouragement or strength or uh, provision rather than your Savior, the Lord Jesus. So five ways to make Jesus the well you draw from. Something practical, something real, something 
encouraging for this coming year. Five ways to make Jesus the well you draw from. There are going to be plans that you will make that are not going to work out in 2013. I bet you. I mean, just going by track record. There are going to be plans. There are going to be some sort of relational plans, financial plans. There's going to be all sorts of plans that you make and you're like, oh, it didn't work out. And in that moment of disappointment, what do you do? In that moment where you feel let down, where you feel God should have solidified your plans, where you, should, you feel God should have seen you through, you thought you had handed that plan to him. You thought you had, you had it covered in prayer, but somehow things didn't work out. Life is often unpredictable. Relationships will not deliver as you expected, and you will face disappointment. You need to have one stable relationship in your life, one relationship that's always there, that you can keep going back to, that is well, that is healthy, that is dependable. One relationship. It needs to be the relationship that defines and informs every other relationship. One relationship that you don't walk away from disappointed. And that relationship is your relationship with the Lord Jesus. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 through 15 says, And this is our confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Do you like the positivity of that? verse, the assurance of that verse, I love that. This is the Savior that we have. We know, we know, we don't feel, we don't sense, we know. And we come to him with that, uh, with that confidence. Number one, you can draw hope in disappointment. You can draw hope in disappointment. To practice the presence of God and to practice it daily. To spend time talking to him about everything so that in the moments when plans don't work out and you are faced with disappointment, you say, Lord, what happened? What happened? And the answer isn't always, you know, what went wrong. Maybe something didn't go wrong. It didn't go wrong. It doesn't have to go wrong every time. It doesn't have to be that every time you did something wrong and therefore it didn't work out. But sometimes just having a situation or an, or, or an opportunity to go back to him and say, Lord, this didn't work out, but I know that this always will. My relationship with you, your presence, your, pre your uh, presence in my life will always will work out. You can draw hope in disappointment. Five ways to draw from Jesus the well. Number one, you can draw hope in disappointment. There are going to be long weeks this coming year where your boss doesn't let up on you. You're going to have extra projects and you're going to have two lazy people in your office for whom you're always covering for. Just like 2012. You're going to show up at office, you're going to find disappointments, you're going to find situations where uh, more work is cast on you or your work was incomplete because you were depending on certain other people. There are going to be situations where you wish you had done things otherwise. You'd wish you had done things differently. And you grow tired. And the first thing that suffers from long weeks of work, 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 busyness, busyness, no margins, no, no Sabbath. There's going to be those weeks and months in 2013. And when you grow tired, the first thing that's going to suffer is going to be your spiritual life. You are drained of spiritual life, life, liveliness, energy. The first thing that suffers... When we give ourselves to work. And there are going to be those periods. It's just, that's the way it is. And you're going to grow tired. And the first thing to suffer will be your spiritual life. You need strength. Most importantly, you need a source that doesn't deplete. That is always available. And is in greater portion than the challenge that is at hand. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 33. God is my strength and my power. God is my strength and my power. And he makes my way perfect. I want you to note the first four words very carefully. It doesn't say God gives me strength. It says God is my strength. This is a relationship issue. This is not a, uh, a potential or a capacity issue. You don't walk away with strength from God. You take God with you. You involve God in your life. He becomes the strength of your life. He is the power, the enabling, the dunamos within you to give you that in it, that endurance and he makes my way perfect he completes it he gets me there he gets me there 
2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is best seen and completed in your weakness, in your incompletion, in your insufficiency. In the moment of your weakness, in the place of, of your defeat, his strength comes in and makes up for the rest. He gives impetus from within and he makes up for the rest. Just those two last miles that you need to run. Just those two last hours that you need to work. Those two, two last minutes that you need to hang in there. He helps you through. He gets you through that. My, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. These are the verses that become so familiar that we begin to tide over them. Psalm 18 verse 32. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way complete, perfect. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way. You're going to need his strength in this coming year. You can draw strength for endurance. You can draw strength for endurance, number two. Number two. You can draw strength for endurance. Some of the most difficult things in our lives and in our relationships are caused by the decisions we make. Did you make any silly decisions in 2012? Any decisions that you think you would like to make differently? Any decisions you wish you had hindsight, insight, or discernment before you made those decisions? Relational decisions, financial decisions, opportunity decisions, plans, decisions. When you made those decisions, you thought it was the best thing at the time, but then it didn't pan out the way you would like. Would you like to revisit that moment and say, this is how I would have done it differently? You're going to have situations in 2013 where you wish you had gone back. So I'm telling you in the beginning of the year, draw from God draw from God the wisdom to make decisions with his insight, with his foresight, and with his discernment. He gives to his people the enabling of the, and, the, and the advantage of his inside information about the future. He gives. He doesn't tell you the future. Don't get me wrong. He doesn't tell you the future. Yes, you're going to marry her only. <laughs> he doesn't tell you that. He keeps you tortured till the last minute. That's true. But he helps you to make a decision that when you come to situations that you did not predict, you think, wow, I made the right decision and I couldn't have done that without God's wisdom. What if he had the inside information into our lives, into our future, our needs for some, from someone who knew our whole life from beginning to end and loves us enough to warn us? Proverbs chapter 2 verse 7. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. You can draw hope in disappointment. You can draw strength in for endurance. You can draw wisdom for decisions. You can draw wisdom for decisions. Some of us struggle with anger and dis discouragement, some sort of frustration is deep down inside. There's this little fire that's constantly burning and every now and then it gets bigger and then goes down again, gets bigger. Some, some memories bring it back. Some things outside us trigger it, external stimuli. We struggle with anger and frustration for many reasons. And one of the greatest reasons we lack the is, we th is that we lack the courage to forgive and let go. Of all the reasons that we struggle with in with anger and bitterness and whatnot, one of the major ones is we struggle with the lack of courage to forgive and let go. <laughs> if if I had forgiven everyone, if I have forgiven everyone, everything they have ever done to me, said to me, and felt towards me, my life would be so different. It would be completely different. A lot of the decisions I make, the way I treat people, the way I go forward in my life, the way I view people and life and situations is, is largely defined by the way I've been treated in the past. The ability to forgive, the courage to forgive will be required in 2013. People are going to mess you up. People are going to mess you up. So rather than walk onto the battlefield and go, down, 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 oh, traps, I should have brought a shield. Go, go forward with the shield, with the courage that when you offend me, I am going to be ready with forgiveness. I dare you. Pick up that shield and walk into 2013 saying, people are going to offend me and when you offend me, I'll be ready to forgive you. 
I'll be ready with a double portion of forgiveness for every offense that you have towards me. I'm going to be ready with, I'm going to have a ready, what's the word I'm looking for? What's the one word for lack of remembrance, for forgetfulness? I'm going to have a ready forgetfulness. You know, I'm going to get ready to forget things you say towards me and uh, do towards me. Wow, how life would be different if I did that. We don't have the courage to forgive. We don't have the courage to let go. And it festers and it ferments and it works with deep within us. It turns to bitterness and forgiveness requires courage. Forgiveness is letting go. It is letting go of the decision, letting go of deciding the outcome of justice for the person who has offended you. Let it go. Let God deal with it. Let God deal with it. And trust me, he will. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. The love of God has been poured out into your heart. What has that got to do with forgiveness? Everything. Everything. What you need is courage. Courage comes from knowing that you are loved. Did you get that? Please understand that. It's very simple psychology, human psychology. Courage comes from knowing that you have, that you, somebody's got your back, that you are loved. When you are loved, you are filled with courage. When you are not loved, you are filled with fear. So the Spirit of God has poured out God's love into our hearts. We're just pounding in it, it's overflowing with it. We have no space, no space for memories and for <laughs> to hold things against each other. There's no space for that because it's constantly there. For this reason, I fall before, fall on my knees before the Father. Paul says about the Ephesian church, from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its true name. I ask God from the wealth of his glory to give you power through his spirit to be strong in your inner selves. That's the strength and that's the place what I'm talking about 2013 needs to be a well you draw from. Not you, God, Christ. And I pray that Christ will make his home in your hearts through faith. I pray that you will, may have your roots and foundation in love. In love. Why? So that you, together with all other God's people, may have the power. That's how power comes from that love. To understand his broad, long, high and deep love. Christ's love. Yes, may you come to know his love although it can never really fully be known, and so be completely filled with the very nature of God. Very interesting. That the love of God poured into you results in courage, it results in power, it results in the nature of God. To him who by means of his power working in us, there you go, is able to do so much more than we can even ever ask or think. To God be glory in the church of Christ Jesus for all time. Are you getting what I'm saying here? That courage to be able to forgive, that courage to let go, it's not an emotional issue. It's a decision. It's a mental decision. It takes courage. You can draw courage to forgive, number four. You can draw courage to forgive from Jesus. If you're close to the well, you can draw courage to forgive. Do it on a daily basis. Do it on a daily basis. You can't drink water for one week try that for physically it doesn't happen it doesn't happen spiritually either you know you can't drink up water today for you Achha, today I didn't drink tomorrow I'll make up you can't do that spiritually the same for every day you need that uh, portion for yourself for yourself all this all this frustration and the bitterness and the lack of forgiveness and the long weeks of work and the issues in our life and the disappointments all of this robs us of joy robs us of joy j o y the physical tiredness the endless bickering in the family the one constant member and the angry member in the family every mem family has got one one member that scares the rest of the family so the rest of the family is always tippy toes so that this one member of the family doesn't get mad. And as long as that one member is happy, the whole family is happy. Don't judge. 
don't decide which member that is. Okay, let's go to work. Let's go to work. There's always that one person at work who demeans you or is never satisfied with your work. Always one. Like you show up at work and there's always that one person that's there. All of this, this one constantly demeaning or unreasonable colleague at office. The long periods of work or projects with no margins to think, no margins to, no time to regroup, come up for air. Oh, this robs you of joy. It knocks the joy out of serving others over and above the regular demands of life. Life becomes so difficult. Just your career and family, handling these two things becomes so draining that forget about the joy of serving anyone else. You know? And that duty of serving then becomes a drudgery. Because you have to go to church and you see pastor's face. And then you feel more guilty. He didn't, he's not even thinking about it also. He's, he's worried about his own issues. Okay, but you see his face or you see someone's face and go, oh, yeah, I didn't come, I should have been there. And there's more guilt and more. No, no need for all of that. All of this can be calmed, it can be soothed, it can be done away with, with a close, intimate, live walk with the Lord. When you're drawing daily from the well, drawing daily from the well, we need to go back to the well. We need to draw. We need to draw deep. We need to draw much. We need to draw deep. We need to draw much. Lord, I need you. I need you. And every day you go back. This goes for the person who's beginning to draw this year. And it goes for the person who's been drawing all his years. No matter where we are in our spiritual life, we need more of the Lord. We need more of him. Job chapter 33 verse 4. The spirit of, the, of God has made me and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. I went through the Psalms and I found about 8 to 10 times David saying, give me life, give me life. Your statutes, they give me life. Save me, give me life. Bring me back, give me life. This is my comfort in my affliction that your promise gives me life. Psalm 119 verse 50. Isaiah 40 verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. These are the familiar verses that we must go back and hold on to. They become so familiar that they pass us by. They who wait for the Lord. Look at those words again. Those people who practice the presence of the Lord, who draw from Him, they wait on Him. They wait on Him. Yep, those are the people. So finally, putting everything together, you can draw joy in service. You can draw joy in service. In the ministry that God has given to you, you can get back to a place where that invigorates you. It gives you great impetus. It gives you great uh, sense of fulfillment in your ministry. Learning to free fall into God's hands when you lose your footing. Learning to lean on God when we run out of strength. Learning to talk to God when we have run out of words. Learning to hear from God when we have run out of solutions. Learning to be still in God when we're done with our restlessness. That is what you get. That is what you need to give yourself to in order to draw from the well daily. In order to draw from the well daily. 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 I'm going to give you five steps. Daily time. Daily time. This is as challenge, as much of a challenge for me as it is for you. This doesn't happen naturally. You don't say, oh, these are spiritual people. That's why they, are, they just naturally give more time to uh, to God for his everyday. It comes for the spiritual person and for the carnal person is just as difficult. It comes hard. I'll tell you two, I'll tell you two three reasons. Number one, your flesh is against it. It doesn't come naturally. Of all the things that you can do to do in a day, including your peanut butter sandwich or answer the doorbell or check Facebook one last time, just in case, there is one, some message I missed by a second. Of all the things, going to your, taking time out to just be with God, to practice His presence will not come naturally. Physically, your body is against it. Number two, the devil is against it. The devil, two major enemies. I don't know which one's worse. But two major enemies will see to it that your day goes by like that and you don't spend time with God. Why does he want so bad that you do not spend time with God? Because he wants you thirsty. He wants you thirsty. And when you're without water and you're thirsty, you're frustrated. When you're frustrated, you react. When you react, 
you say stupid things, you do stupid things. When you do stupid things, say stupid things, you feel guilty. When you feel guilty, you feel condemned. When you feel condemned, you are just where he wants you. Because that defies and annuls the work of Christ on the cross. He would like you to ha be in that position every day. It's just it's simple. It's simple. You got to drink. Daily time. Number two, daily surrender. Daily surrender. And I'm not talking about, you know, sin and all of that. I'm talking about situations that you are beyond your control. Where does anger come from? Anger is an emotion that says I'm out of control. You're angry with somebody because you can't control the outcome of their behavior, can't control their opinion, can't control their, be uh, their love towards you or whatever. When you can't control something directly or indirectly, you get angry. Anger is just a sign that you are losing control, that you are out of control. But when you take that situation and you surrender it to God and say, Lord, I, I'm out of control in this situation. Please, Lord, you, you pray over it. You control this person or you control the situation and it's prayed up, you are doing okay. That's called surrender. So taking what you cannot control and surrendering it up to God. Surrendering it up to God. It's not the white flag kind of control. <laughs> I can't do anything. It's all yours. I'm, no, I'm not talking about like s a defeated sort of. I'm saying, Lord, this I can't handle. You do this. I'll, I'll do this. Lord, oh, this is beyond me. You do this. You start surrendering so much to God that most of your life is in his hands. That's what I'm talking about. It's a very deliberate enjoyment of his strength and his uh, enabling in your life. Number three, daily worship. Daily worship. Your personal worship. Sing a song. Read a verse. Quote a psalm. Talk to God. Express your love to God. Why? What is worship going to do? Worship is going to take your focus off yourself and put it on God. And worship is going to recalibrate your size. <laughs> the more you focus on God, you realize how small, tiny you and I are. Are you with me? That's what worship does. Number four, daily reading. Daily reading. You eat every day. Don't starve for three days and eat on the fourth day. Starve for three days, eat on the fourth day. It's very unhealthy. You'll, be, you'll struggle with indigestion. That's when you don't understand the scriptures. That's when you're like, I don't get what is going on over here. I don't know what God is. Are you with me? Indigestion. Daily reading. Every day, read a little portion. That, and if you want a Bible reading program, come to us. We've got lots of it. It's on the web. Get BibleGateway.com, Bible.org, uh, YouVersion.com. Beautiful Bible reading plans. It will hit your inbox every morning. With the scriptures. I mean, how spoilt is that? You don't, it doesn't even give you the reference and then you link and go to it. It actually gives the scriptures right there. So you can just web, Facebook, scripture, Facebook, scripture. And number five, daily obedience. Daily obedience. Every day focus on one fruit of the spirit and say, Lord, today I'm going to work on my self-control. Today I'm going to work on my... Check it out. It's there. Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, tender, mercy is coming on time. Yeah. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you so much for 2013. Thank you for what you have put in store for us, Lord. The difficult stuff as well as the fun stuff. Lord, we embrace it because it comes from you. Thank you, Father, that you are a well close by that we can draw from every day. Thank you that it's free. Father, we worship your holy name. We bless your holy name. We thank you that your strength gives us life, that your joy uh, wells deep within, that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Thank you that you remember that we are dust and that you do not expect from us what we cannot deliver. Thank you, O oh God, that our, you are not disappointed with us because you know the future. So we don't have to ever come, back, come into your presence and have to explain your disappointment. Thank you, Father God, for the father that you are and going to be to us for the difficult times in 2013 for the disappointments for the moments when we will need you the most oh god i surrender and pray for my congregation and i ask lord that you would be close to them be close to them and rather than being caught surprised or by surprise i pray that they would cling close to you and that they would draw from the well daily i pray that i would draw more from the well than any of them so that in my giving out, 
I would not be giving from my wisdom or my strength or my enabling. It would not be from my personality or from my humanness. But to be a channel, to be a uh, vessel so that you pour in and uh, it's poured out to them. This is my prayer for myself as a shepherd and for the other shepherds, uh, Ranjit and uh, Sandeep and others, Lord. Father God, we commit ourselves anew and afresh. We commit ourselves to your purposes. We commit ourselves to your goal for our life, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for 2013. We commit it to you in Jesus' name.